Hi everyone, it's Ian from Q-Tips, and I hope you're having a decent start to the year. It's 2021, and we are still in the throes of the global pandemic. So I thought I would uh, create a little video to to catch up on the status of things in South Africa per district. And I got the idea when I came across the this article, <coughs> and in this article, there is a table with the number of cases per 100,000 people per district. And what they've done is effectively created uh, a table showing the areas of the worst affected per 100,000 people. So I thought it might be interesting to recreate this table and then link it to the actual um, layer, the district layer that I have in QGIS. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to start off by creating a little folder. And this will just be my little projects folder for this video. And I'll call it COVID cases. And uh, what I need to do is recreate that table. So I'm going to just say a new Excel spreadsheet. And I'll just say cases per 100K. OK, there we go. So it's a blank spreadsheet. And if we go back to my web page, I now need to recreate. So I don't have the, the Excel spreadsheet for that table. So I'm just going to recreate it from scratch. So we'll start off with a heading for districts and cases. Whoa. Cases. And we'll just start at the top. The first one, or the worst affected area at the moment, is the garden route. And then I'll do the same for all the others. And let's just have a look. I need to zoom in slightly. That is 4883. So 4,883 cases per 100,000 people. Okay, and we'll create the rest as well in the same way. Okay, so I've now finished my table, and this is what it looks like. All right, so we have got our cases per 100,000 per district. So we'll just go into QGIS and we'll add the district layer, which I have down here. There we go. So there's all the districts. I'll quickly label that. So I'm just going to label using the names of the district, district name. I'll draw a text buffer. And we can leave that open for now. And then I want to add the, the spreadsheet that I've just created. And what I did is I created a, a little a link to that folder that I've created online. So let's just refresh this. Oh, I think, let me just redo that. I'm going to remove that and add that favorite again. So it is on the desktop. COVID cases. That's the one there. And that is our spreadsheet. So we can add that to our project. And now all we need to do is link on district with the number of cases to the attribute table of our shapefile layer using district name. So the column that you link to or the field that you link to needs to have the, the same, it needs to be the same type. So if it's a number, it needs to be a number. And if it's a text or a string field, it needs to be a string. And then as long as the name for each of the districts is identical, it will link through. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna open up the properties for the district municipalities layer. We'll select the Joins tab, create a new join by clicking on the green plus sign. There is only one table in our project, so that is the join layer. And then we'll choose the district name field. We're targeting the district name. Okay, so it's district to district. So you can see that they are both strings because they've got a little ABC uh, graphic next to them. Um, we don't need a field, really. I can just create one and you can create any field if you want to just so that you can sort of identify which columns that you bring through are from the external sheet so in this case I'm just going to call them link uh, actually you know what let's just go CS for cases and say OK and then OK so now when we open up the attribute table for our layer we should have a new column for the number of cases now it doesn't add the district uh, column as well because that's been linked over here so, it's, so it doesn't get repeated but any additional columns 
um, will get added to that. Uh, the next thing I can do is maybe just tidy this up a bit, just to show you how to do that. If you want to organize your columns, you can turn these off. Um, it doesn't delete them, it just uh, prevents them from being shown. Uh, these aren't maybe relevant, and we can say OK. And then that uh, neatens things up a bit. So now we only have uh, four columns to look at. And then we can close that down. And let's color it up. So what we'll do is we'll use the cases to color up uh, to see where the the hotspots are on a district level. So uh, we're going to use our little layer styling option here. So if you click on the little, so to open layer styling, just click on this little ABC pen. And then we did the, the labeling. Now I want to actually style the um, polygons. So you click on that first option and choose graduated. And now we need to tell it which column to use. We're going to use cases. And we'll choose a color ramp. And I like this red one here. And we'll choose uh, pretty breaks. And let's set that at 10. OK, so what we've done is we've got 10 classes. And it's pretty break. So this just rounds the numbers up and makes it look quite nice. Not that this map looks nice, because these are hotspot COVID areas. And then we can have a look at the portions of our country that are um, have got the highest cases per 100,000. So the possibly the next thing we can do is we can maybe just change the layer rendering so that we can see through the layers. So I'm going to make it 75. Just makes them slightly uh, lighter, but then will allow us to, to see through them. The other thing I can do is maybe just, uh, I'm just going to duplicate this layer. So where is it? Uh, duplicate layer. And then I'm going to change the styling of this one. So now this duplicated layer, it's just got, it's called copy at the moment. I'm just going to make it a single symbol. And then what I'll do is I'm going to change the fill style to no brush. And then just make that sure that there's no um, opacity. And in doing this, and I'll also turn off the uh, the name, so we're going to go no labels, and now we can turn that off. The reason I do that is now because if I if I need to flick between the two, I can still see the uh, boundaries of the district that I was looking at, and I'll show you why that's relevant now. Uh, after I've added a background layer, so I'm going to add a base layer from Quick Map Services, and I'm going to go with the Google Roads layer, and that'll add Google Roads for the the whole country or the whole world, but it'll uh, give us a better idea of where we are in the country. So for instance, if we come down here to the garden route, which has been the subject of many news reports this last holiday, um, <coughs> you'll see that it includes the towns of Plettenberg Bay, Neisner, Sedgefield George, Mossel Bay. Okay, I identify those areas in particular because they are, are very popular po spots with tourists. And this is one of the reasons why, over this last holiday uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, in South Africa, our government decided to, to ban bathing at the beaches because they didn't want a, a, a spread. Now, the beaches ban <laughs> may not have helped um, because people flock to those areas anyway, and they still go to various restaurants, and they didn't ban restaurants. But you can see the, the thought process behind it. If you have a look at the areas that are the least affected in cases per 100,000, you can see they are the most northern, well, in this particular instance, it's up in the Limpopo, it's the, the Vembe district, which only has, if we have a little look at this Vembe district, it has 496 cases per 100,000, so, so quite a lot less. And the general trend <coughs> is that the coastal areas have got the highest rates of infection. So we can see why uh, they would want to focus on these areas during holiday season. Anyway, that's, that's the video I wanted to show you. I hope you've learned something. And if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, plug a comment on the forum. And s hopefully someone can answer your question there. Okay, cheers.